What's up, everybody? What's going on? Hey. Hey. Just living the dream. Can you guys hear me? Loud and clear. Look at good, Scott. Loud and clear. Are you at the beach or is that a fake background? No, I'm right at the beach. My buddy's house is right on the beach, Oregon coast. Dude, that's baller. That's sweet. Yeah, that's nice. Hi, Car Karin. How's it Hi. going? Good. Hey, Karin. Everybody, it's Karin Kildow. Yep, like the it. Dow, like the Dow Jones Industrial. Yeah, you can that today. It works. Classic. Uh, and then Jimmy, Jimmy Lazier here coming to us from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Is that right? Yes, sir. What's up, guys? How's it going? What's up, Jimmy? Dude, you got a lot of swag and delic back there. What's going on? <laughs> Just stuff collected from the road. Wow. That's awesome. And then, and then we got Jason Belzer here, uh, back home in New Jersey, right across the river from New York City. Um, me and Jason were together earlier this week. So uh, Jason is the real expert here in regards to what kids earning money off name, image, likeness comes from. He runs Athletic Director U, D1 Ticker, Student Athletes Name, Image, Likeness Agency called Sunil. Uh, I don't know. You could keep going, Jason, but the, the resume is long. Good to, good to see you, Jason. Likewise, Glad you could uh, be a part of this. It makes absolute sense. I will cool. pretend not to be jealous this whole time as you sit on the beach. But I'm not on the beach. The, the people right behind me are the people that you should be there over that way. And they've got cocktails in hand. So um, I told them I, we have a hard stop at seven o'clock. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Uh, do, do, do. It's like we got a few folks rolling in. Beautiful. Yeah, no, influencers said they were going to send out a, uh, a, a notification through the software about an hour before this started. So hopefully we get some good traction. Should should be able to get some. I've got some, yes, I've got some very intense questions. Hopefully you guys are ready for it. Um, I'm going to hold back no punches. And um, I just don't know if you guys are going to be ready for this intensity. We're ready. You're All ready. right, we'll see. Are you guys going to? Uh, you're recording it are you gonna upload it to like youtube after or something yep i believe that's the goal uh, i'm gonna probably let jordan speak to the specifics but we're definitely recording it so it's gonna live on dude that's a wild painting you got there man chase dude i'm at the clayton house um so not in the office probably should have done this from the office but living the life on the road absolutely uh, we can give everybody a couple minutes and then um, I don't know what the count is, but we'll I'll wait a couple minutes. Jimmy, my sister-in-law is really close friends with a girl named Bridget. I believe that's your first cousin. Is that correct? Uh, Bridget Kane? Yeah. Yeah. Bridget Kane. That is no way. Yeah, so Bridget saw me post the Icon Source thing, and she was like, "Wait, my first cousin works for Icon Source," and I was like, "No, Jimmy, he's at Oakley still. He's gonna come and I'm jump no, on with us tonight." No way, small world. Yeah, uh, my so my sister in law and Bridget are really close friends. No way. Yep. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. Small world. All right, um, what are we at? Are invited? Invite list is still a little thin, but we'll see how it goes. Karin, did you tell all of your friends? Are we going to have a bunch of hot shots joining us that's in your inner circle? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound too convincing. Me, to be it snuck up on me. I should have been cranking it out a little more. But I'm sure you guys this is, this is the first one. Yeah, we're going to do more of these and it will get better and better. This one could be a little rough, but I think it's going to be really valuable for, for everybody getting to listen. Uh, so I'm excited. Just take all these experts that um, all in the same place to be helpful. As long as the content's good and we can promote it afterwards, that's what matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Jason's the content king, so we'll follow his lead. Yeah, we, we got to get these kids fired up and ready to accept deals and start living their best life. So hopefully, you know, the next couple of, of episodes of this thing really gets people to understand that safe place um, and that they need to start saying yes. So I'm excited for it. Uh, you want to give it 
uh, let's see, 6.04. We'll go 6.05. Sure. All right. Jimmy, did you work on um, Glass Helmet at Oakley? I did, yes. Yeah, I did too at Uninterrupted. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the uh, Miami event for Super Bowl. How was I? We probably, I'm sure we actually worked together. Yeah, I'm sure we're on a bunch of emails and calls. Yes, it's crazy time. That is awesome. I love it. And Jimmy, no Instagram. I tried to tag you or did I just not be able to find you? I do. I just don't have a good one. It's pretty mellow. <laughs> I was trying to give you some love on the IG today. I guess I couldn't find oh, you. Just J Laser. J Laser. All right. I'll find you on there. All right. You know, really surprised a few of your colleagues being on here. They're not aware. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. What do you say? Should we go? Give this thing a whirl? Yeah. Let's do it. You guys fired up? Let's make it happen. All right. All right. We're ready. Welcome to Icon Source U, Basics of Sports Marketing. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight uh, on a Thursday. Spend some quality time with some very interesting, special, informed people within the sports marketing realm. I'll start out by introducing myself. My name is Scott Taylor. I'm the CRO or Old Crow at Icon Source, <laughs> Chief Revenue Officer with special guest Chase Garrett, founder and CEO of Icon Source and former Red Bull athlete marketing manager. Also have Drew Butler, executive vice president, collegiate at Icon Source and former Arizona Cardinals punter. So that's pretty good. He also, I think, was rumored to have attended some school in Georgia. I'm not sure if that was a community college and he was drafted later on or not. But we also have <laughs> Karin Kildow, head of social and digital at Beyond Meat. Is that the meat that's not meat, but it's Beyond Meat? It's better for you? Something like that, I think. It's a big deal. Yeah. All right. Professional athlete, social consultant at Content Capital. Jimmy Leisure, NFL sports marketing manager at Oakley. I think those guys, uh, you know, they're in the, the sunglass business. I think and then try to take over the rest of the world. Welcome, Jimmy. And uh, Jason Belzer, co-founder and managing partner at Student Athlete NIL and president at Game Inc. And I'm sure the president, owner, and investor of a dozen other companies. Welcome, everybody. Thank appreciate you. it yeah Thanks, we're gonna talk, yeah you got it man um we're going to talk about some things hopefully that'll be helpful to a bunch of uh college students uh specifically the athletes and also brands that are trying to reach out to them and uh we're excited to have you in here too we're going to get right to it um there's a lot of questions i think we'll have a lot of answers and if we don't have the answers we'll just mumble a lot but uh let's get right to it so the why, what do we have? College athletes have a plethora of questions about sports marketing, and we're here to help. What are some of those questions? Well, we want to understand what the heck, uh, how's the, what's the price? What's your value? Pitfalls and benefits of working with some of the brands. How to market yourself. Um, you know, it's amazing to watch how many athletes are signing up and how many athletes aren't signing up. But the truth is, there's no question about whether it's legal or not for college athletes to get paid for their name, image, and likeness. Although there's gonna be some trepidation, we understand that. And hopefully we'll put to bed some of those uh, fears. We're gonna start out with a couple of questions. First one, and I'm gonna send this out to the group and see who's aggressive and steps on each other. There's a, a significant difference between the marketability of professional and collegiate athletes. We get that. What advice would you give a student athlete on the limited amount of time for their earning potential? So there's a, there's a tight window especially in college, especially for those people that won't make it to the NFL or NBA or a professional sport. So give me some of your opinions on that. I'm going to start us off here. Sorry, guys. Bit of a bully. I love um, it. There it is. <laughs> I got a few opinions on this. Um, I think first off, you know, the, the, the opportunity to earn money off of your brand, your image is a, is a privilege and it's something to be, uh, you know, very excited about. There's a lot of people that worked hard ahead before you guys were all student athletes to make sure that you have the ability to do so. Uh, and for the most part, the chances of making dollars in the professional world are very slim. It's a challenging place to, to especially make money off endorsements. Um, and so I think having the ability to create uh, relevance in your community where you have 
fans, brands, all types of people that have a ton of love for the university and the bigger team that you're a part of, being able to leverage that for your monetary benefit is a great opportunity. And, and I think it's just something that, that student athletes need to absolutely lean into uh, and take advantage of uh, versus when, when you're in the professional space, that's the absolute best of the best. And, and I think you got to be achieving that from a, you know, on the field perspective, on the court, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, a traditional athlete, action sports, Olympic athlete, a gymnast, you got to be performing at an extremely high level. And then uh, brands are going to want to talk to that audience. So uh, th there's definitely in differences, but I think right now there's a ton of interest from new brands that have never worked with athletes to jump in and, and find the right college athlete to work with. So, Lauren, what do you just, think about this? Do you say me? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like r such an exciting time because for the first time in history, everyone has the opportunity to make their own platform with their own content. So you don't have to wait till you win the Super Bowl or you, you know, win the national championship to be on the cover of the newspaper. You can, you have social media, which allows you to make your own platform every single day. So take advantage of that. And really, whether you like it or not, show your personality show what you believe in and you have the opportunity to do that every single day. And I think brands really care about that. And my advice would be, you know, when someone thinks of your name, they should think of one thing. So really just like be clear on what your specific focus is, whether it's your, you know, obviously it's going to be your sport, but also what kind of personality traits, what do you stand for? I always tell athletes pick three pillars and focus on those. And that will be your North star of the content you make, the brands you work with, and it will help you. So you're not trying to do everything all at once. Um, but really take advantage of the fact that you have that platform. Um, if you can have your own newspaper or your own television network every single day on social, like why would you pass it up? But that's like really good advice for somebody that's going to go pro. But what about these kids that will never go pro? Some, you know, right tackle for Morgan State or something. And some brand wants him to be involved in some nutrition deal. And they're offering the kid 500 bucks or 250 bucks. Does he need to have that intensity or should he just go, thanks, that's great. Yeah, send me the money. I want my 250 or 300 bucks. So I'll, I'll chime in here uh, if you guys don't mind. So yesterday flying home from Atlanta after meeting with, with Chase and Drew, I sat on the plane uh, back to New York next to a girl by the name of Catherine Ewing. Catherine Ewing happens to be a uh, Ohio State lacrosse player. She's a fifth year senior. Uh, she is the captain. She is not on social media. So when I started talking to her about NIL, she says, well, I'm not really into social media. I don't know if I can sell myself. And I explained to her that in the NIL world, you're going to have the hundred or so athletes that are the, you know, 2 million followers on TikTok, the, the Haley and Hannah Cavenders, and then you're going to have the hundred thousand, right? Which is pretty much everybody else that doesn't have a huge social media following and is going to have to differentiate themselves, right? What's their unique value proposition? And I asked her, what's your unique value proposition? And she said, well, I'm getting my master's in economics and I have an undergrad in public policy and I'm thinking how many current student athletes, particularly females, are getting a master's degree, potentially going to get a PhD in economics that are the captains of a Big Ten team. And I said, there are probably a thousand brands out there that would love to have you as the brand ambassador for their program. It doesn't matter if you have any social followers, just you and what you bring to the table is an immense. And so I said, what I would do is I would think of every company or organization that you would want to work for in the world of economics and public policy and reach out to them and tell them, hey, I'm a student athlete and I want to work with your company. Can we find something to do together? And maybe it doesn't lead to a, uh, a paid opportunity, but maybe it leads to an internship. Maybe it leads to a job. The door is open for you. And so that's the reality of the situation is if you don't have anything to differentiate yourself from somebody else, whether that's having a million Instagram followers or having a unique story, whether that's your major, where you come from, whatever that is, it's you're going to be hard pressed to do anything with that. All right. So Jimmy, listen, you're at Oakley. You guys are signing big deals, snowboarders, football players, baseball players, and the pros. Now you've got college. Are you guys going to still be super choosy about that? Or do you go deep and wide or, or what happens with the Oakley brand? 
we're still actually trying to navigate that ourselves. But one of the great things, even a national brand like Oakley that you always hear with these big brands is they're always trying to regionalize and get younger, reach the younger consumer, reach specific markets. So I think that's what is a great opportunity during all this for even if it's not a national brand, these guys got to know, hey, brands are always trying to get younger, reach younger audiences and zone in on specific markets. So I think that's where this is a, a huge opportunity. And Drew Butler's super angry and pissed off because he couldn't get any of this loot <laughs> back when he was playing college football at uh, Georgia. And Drew, you got to have an opinion about this, man. Yeah, I do. And I think everybody's brought up absolutely fantastic points so far uh, to jump off what Jason said. First off, you know, that specific scenario with the Ohio State lacrosse captain who's not on social media that is a great opportunity for her to create relationships in the professional world that then she can leverage when she's done playing lacrosse when she's done with her masters. Yes, yeah, she might be able to make a few bucks or she's going to be able to meet a lot of people who will have influence in her life later. And these conversations may have been a little bit of a gray area just 25, 28 days ago, but now they're completely legal and, and now they can be above board and they can have these conversations to come to an agreement and say, hey, I'm really interested in what you're doing. This aligns with my personal brand. Can we explore the opportunity to work together and you guys can leverage my name, image, and likeness. That is a perfect example of how wide this web is going to spread. And then what Karen said, you know, she was bringing up, you don't have to win a Super Bowl right now in order to be able to leverage your name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness is really a welcome to the real world moment for student athletes because in professional sports marketing, Chase is an expert in it. Jimmy works in it. Karin's worked in it. Um, I was just a punter. So sports marketing for me, it came very few and far between. <laughs> but if you lose that excitement and if you are losing games in professional sports, yeah, the sports marketing endorsements go away, but then you lose your job. Like that is the profession of professional sports. If you're not performing at a high level, you don't get endorsements. And if you're not performing at a high level personally, you lose your job. The excitement right now around collegiate athletics is something that should really catch the attention of all student athletes, because let's just talk about football for one second. I'm down here in Atlanta. There's tons of excitement. We're just less than 50 days away from the start of college football. Every single fan base in the Southeast loves their football team. Every single fan base thinks their football team is going to win the national championship. And right now, I would bet that a lot of schools in this region, a lot of schools across the country, there are companies that would love to support financially, monetarily, student athletes. Why not take advantage of it right now if it aligns with your brand in order to strike while the iron's hot, create those professional relationships, put a little change in your pocket and start building your brand. I think that's a great opportunity for student athletes to understand right now. Yeah, and it's interesting. I was talking to Varney. Some of you guys remember who Varney is. It used to be the sunglasses that my generation, everybody around you, whether you're yacht racing or skiing, was wearing. They're trying to make a comeback. We had them on a call the other day, and I was talking about the Ivy Leagues. Now, these kids in the Ivy League aren't trying to build their social media following to 100,000. That's not where they're going to make their money when they're going to Brown or Princeton or Yale. They're going to make their money investment banking or something else, right? But how would, you, would you rather have 40,000 followers over here or 1800 followers of somebody pursuing, you know, a law degree, you know, playing women's soccer at uh, Brown. It's going to be really interesting to watch what happens in some of these Ivy League, some of the other schools that you get to really kind of define that micro influencer that you're looking for. Next question real quick. What's the difference between being selective and limiting your opportunities? You want to build and protect your brand, but the opportunities to strike while the iron's hot, as Drew just said, is paramount for some benefits and pitfalls. Karin, what do you think? Kind of what I was speaking to before is like being authentic. So really think of if you're going to work with a brand, do you really believe in that brand? Do you really use it? That's going to come through with the way you work with them, the way you promote it. And I think if you are taking on a bunch of brands just because they're giving you quick money, it's going to come off inauthentic and you're going to degrade kind of the value of your influence. Um, so I would say it's if you're if you're clear on your pillars of like what you believe in, whether it's like nutrition or uh, grit or humor, like you can then do a lot of deals in those pillars without it coming off inauthentic. It's like when you start to go all over the place, I think for the quick buck is when you start to like long-term hurt your value overall. So I would just say like really care and be authentic with what you believe in and then find brands 
that fit that. And then, and then you can really go hard in it. Jason, does it really matter for some of these guys? Should they just take the 200 bucks? And we kind of touched on this before, but I want to make sure that we distinguish like what's the downside of taking a deal, you know, with some hat company for 150 bucks. Do you just take as many as you can get when, you know, you're not going to go pro. So, the, so I think with the last few words that you said are the key here is you're not going to go pro, right? So if you're in that situation, you have kind of two things that you have to factor. One is how much money can I make right now while I actually have value to my NIL? Because once I graduate, it's, I'm pretty much irrelevant. And then the other end is, is my time better spent finding the one or two partnerships that will reap benefits once I do graduate and I'm not going pro. So sure, you can go do all these kinds of deals and make a couple hundred bucks. But as I mentioned earlier with that, that girl from Ohio State, I would rather spend my time creating some sort of authentic partnership that will allow me to potentially work for a company, do something in some capacity that has value. And it's not that I'm shilling, you know, uh, Uber Eats on my, my Instagram all day. All right. But so Chase, what do you think about that? I mean, we're seeing thousands of people on the platform. You know, some of these kids are put, turning their nose up on some pretty nice deals and it, it is, they're not like BS deals. They're, they're known brands, but they're kind of thinking, do you think they're thinking or do you think they have some crazy uncle trying to get them a $20,000 deal with Taco Bell? Uh, yeah, well, I think there's a lot of bad advice going on right now just because there's a lot of people with very little experience trying to jump in and, and have influence or get a, get a part of this. Uh, I think, you know, as a baseline, I, I like to say to athletes, is this a business or product that you would want to work with or engage outside of sponsorship? Would you buy it? Do you use it? Have you always looked up to it? Uh, does it make sense? Like, does this fit your everyday life? And I think that's kind of like the beginning that you got to decide before, before. And then uh, secondly, you know, how are they going to leverage you? You know, do you have control over uh, how you're going to be portrayed? If you're going to do social media posts, can you create it and make sure it fits your voice? And so I think these are just some of the questions that need to be made. And, and you know, one of the things we've seen on the platform is a lot of people just saying no. And I think it's really important to understand, learn more. Even if it seems like a far-fetched idea, say, hey, I would like to know a little bit more about your, your brand or your product or you, or could we adjust the, the compensation, you know, because maybe this would make a little bit more sense. Uh, but I, I just never really see a good instance to where your only response is no. Um, and so just, just letting parties get to know each other. It's one of the things on the icon source platform that's, uh, we've made true so that you can direct directly talk to each other back and forth on demand. There's no sort of, we're not speaking on behalf of athletes or brands. There's no middleman. It's, it's athletes or their agents talking directly to the brands and just ask them questions. And, and I think, uh, if, if the compensation is worth your time after, after you kind of check the other boxes, I think you jump into it. You don't, you don't try to hardball negotiate guys for you know seven figure deals because at the end of the day there's a lot of college athletes so you always got to measure your supply and demand how much leverage do you have uh, but i think if it's something that you feel you're being honored and respected with the compensation you like the product and you get to control the messaging i think you, you jump in and you and you uh and you kind of test the waters out so Jimmy, i want to give an example right here scott because chase chase brings up a great point okay and this was before icon source this was last fall um, before I was part of Icon Source, before I knew of Icon Source, I got an email. I thought it was a joke. I thought I was being pranked. Uh, no free ads, but it was from an influencer agency, and they wanted to see if I was interested in doing a sponsorship for Poncho's Cheese Dip. I was like, this is a joke, right? So <laughs> I at least emailed back, is this for real? What is Poncho's Cheese Dip? I'm Googling what Poncho's Cheese Dip is. It's supposedly like this cult cheese dip that was coming to the Southeast. They had found my podcast. They were interested. They said, do you want to do a sponsored branded post? I show my wife. I'm like, I don't know. What are you thinking? Now we're having a conversation to your point, Chase. They're like, well, we're going to send you a ton of cheese dip to your house and we'll pay you. What are your prices? So I go, I don't know. I threw something up against the wall and they said, yep, that sounds good. It was way more than I thought that I was going to get paid. I thought they were going to say no. I was going to laugh about it. Two days later, a box shows up at my house, 10 huge cartons of cheese dip. I dig into them. They're delicious. I'm like, okay, now and, I got to close. Look at the girlish figure he has still. Of course, right? Dip. 
So I'm like, now I got to post. I start posting. I make it really quote unquote cheesy. My post, I'm having fun with it. They loved it. My daughters love the cheese dip. People are commenting, oh my God, where did you find this? I used to love this when I lived in Texas. It was just kind of really weird how it all happened. And then the holiday seasons came up. They came back and said, hey, Drew, we loved your first post. Let's do two more, one the week of Christmas, one the week of New Year's. Name your price. We'll get it done. A perfect example of yeah. having a conversation and something authentic and fun can come from it. Um, shout out Poncho's Cheese Dip. It's still in my fridge. Are we getting any of that? Are they sponsoring this show? Are we getting some cheese? Oh, yeah, Poncho's is on Icon Source. They're shelling out Cheese Dip to the right out. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. It's good so, stuff. So, I mean, I mean, look, the, the story is just listen. Like, you don't have to say no first, right? I mean, Nancy Reagan, for some of you remember her, her big thing was just say no to drugs. Well, let's just change it around a little bit just say yes oh, to deals at first you can dip. always turn around and say yes to cheese dip Absolutely. That's I'm, glad, I'm glad you shared that story man um so let let's say if it went if it went all wrong and it turned out to be a nightmare what brand do you think can hurt you is there a brand that can hurt you um you know jason is there a brand like we're talking about how you should really think about it does it meet your criteria but what if it's like Jimmy's freaking pizzeria down the road? Jimmy gets busted for some drunken driving thing. And now you don't want to be a, so does it matter to some kid that's a sophomore junior in college that's never going to get drafted to the bigs? So if, if, if I'm advising a student athlete, I don't know if it's just the generic brand. I don't know if you can worry about every hypothetical situation, but you know, we see right now, for example, Bar Stool is sponsoring a lot of student athletes. They're not really giving any money. It's all in-kind sponsorship. And I don't know if that's a brand that I want to be associated with. I mean, I know as an employer Look at you. Look that at you. hires you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to do a deal with Barstool, huh? <laughs> Every person that works for the companies that I own or operate or I'm a partner in is a student athlete. We pretty much only hire former student athletes. Yeah. And which is good, right, for these student athletes, but I will always go look at somebody's social posts, what are they interested in, and if it's more barstool than it is interesting news or whatever they're doing, that's going to turn me off, and wow. so you have to be very careful. You might think wow. like, hey, I, I want to be a stool guy or whatever, and at the end of the day, that doesn't come off. Wow, with. look at you guys. Drew Butler is a fan of that too, huh, Drew? Look at you, snobby Arizona Cardinal man. <laughs> What's that all about, bro? You know what? Hey, I, I would probably lean on advice in that situation. You know, that's what compliance officers are for. That's what professional legal advice is for. Um, you know, you can use your university resources to talk about specific situations. Hey, I'm not sure. Maybe you tell the brand, hey, love what you guys do. Can I go get some advice and I'd come back right to you and give you an answer again, so how's ghosting Jimmy them is that? not the right thing to do because yeah. if you do ghost them, I think Karin and Jimmy could speak to this. They're going to go speak to each other and say, Hey, I just sent this kid a deal. He didn't even dignify it with a response. Yeah. Don't go work with them. You guys talk yeah. to each other and you're going to go, I don't know about that. That's not really the person that you want to do business with. So again, it's not illegal to have communication. I think yeah. you can really become professional in how you respond to brands, how you stick up for yourself. Because again, it's a welcome to the real world moment. You have to do that when you're out of school and you're not protected by, hey, I play a sport. I have this type of you know, elevated sense of ego or whatever it may be. Um, you know, it's time to act like an adult, especially when people are trying to pay you money. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, is Oakley taking this thing serious? Like talk about the other five or six brands, you know, the big brands are spending big money on pro sports. This was like this moment where all of a sudden the seas just open. Now they've got 400 plus thousand athletes that they can now do deals with. Is Oakley taking this serious? Have they had these big meetings in the boardrooms with the marketing teams, brand people saying, we're going to dump 10 million, we'll figure it out? Yeah, definitely. And it's definitely something, you know, we're creating a strategy around and planning for just unfortunately with the, the size and the scope, we weren't able to jump right in. But like, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're always looking to regionalize our marketing plans where we can reach out to a college base and you got to realize alumni, younger targets. So, I mean, there's a huge target audience that, you know, we're always trying to reach that we think can be achieved through this platform. What brands do you think can really benefit from this? I mean, the endemic stuff, you know, Oakley's, Nike's, and what, what other brands, Karin, do you think 
are looking at this space now and looking at the power of these micro influencers in really targeted geo demographic areas? I mean, I think everybody is um, like at Beyond Meat, for example, you know, we kind of we did a di it differently by giving ambassador deals with equity in a pre IPO company that really? wow. Would these yeah. kids even wish, know I wish that, I got right? that. <laughs> well, no. And, and yeah, like that was a lot of the athletes before. And now I think it's, you know, it's an interesting time to be like, okay, how do we quickly pivot? How do we work with all these college athletes? So good advice too, is like, if you do connect with the brand, it's good to just write them, like message them, like have your people talk to them and be like, Hey, like example, I'm a plant-based athlete. I love beyond meat products. I would love to do this with you. Sometimes the brand might not be thinking of it, but they're like, this is a layup, like, why not try it? So be like, again, like know what you care about and then reach out to brands that you think might be good. And there's probably a lot of hidden gems with equity or, you know, just starting small and see where it grows because if they're not ready and you come with a idea, it might be an easy yes. I love that. And, and I think Chase, like, I'm gonna pass this to you real quick, but what, what's so cool about Icon Source, yeah, sure, I work for Icon Source, I love it. And I'm gonna talk about it but we protect the player so they can have that conversation. If you're not protected, if you're not signed up someplace where you're coordinating this, and this is what Drew's been you know, going crazy about the last couple of months. If you're not protected out of the gate, if you don't have a system in place that's gonna be able to take that offer and then distribute it to the AD or to you know, the parties that be, um, you're just on your own. So, I mean, Chase, we're trying to recommend people go to, to our platform so they're protected. What other advice would you give them? Yeah, I think, um... There's a number of things that you got to be aware of. You need to have a great contract that protects yourself. That brand is going to want a contract that protects their expectations. Uh, that's not something that a lot of people have a ton of experience doing. Uh, your, your average neighborhood lawyer probably hasn't done a lot of athlete endorsement deals. So it's good to be able to, be able to either call our friend Jason here or, or have some sort of solution to be able to get you a a contract that uh, is a not going to jeopardize your eligibility. It's not going to promise something that you're not even aware of, give you your likeness and perpetuity. And then B that, that information needs to go to your, your compliance officer because every single deal has to be disclosed, even if it's an in kind uh, product offering. So um, there's a, there's a few loopholes that need to be kind of managed through this process. It's not just a full on free for all, although it seemed a bit that way so far, I really believe it's going to tighten up and, and become a little bit more professional. And as a student athlete, there's just a couple of things you need to be prepared for. How, you know, are you going to get your tax documents ordered uh, in time by every single deal that you do? How is payment going to come through? Can you trust that, that that's going to come through after you activate? Is your compliance officer signed off on this beforehand? Uh, you know, there's just a number of things um, where, you know, a platform like ours, we've done this for a long time in the pros. Uh, I've personally done a lot of different deals of all types of different sports. And we said, all right, here's the best way to empower a student athlete. This is what, you know, the biggest agents in the world and the professional sports are using on a daily basis and have given us great feedback. And so it's, it's really exciting that now student athletes can do this. And simultaneously, there's a platform here that can really allow them to, to, uh, to profit off this without being extorted because, everybody's going to be coming at them, trying to extort them in different ways from, yeah, you know, your distant cousins and uncles and everybody that's been a lifetime, you know, expert at, at everything. And so uh, it's just good to make sure that you're doing it the right way. Yeah. And I would just say too, like be wary because a lot of brands will slide into your DMS and like, I've, I've seen a lot of professional, like big time professional athletes start doing side deals in their DMS. It will mess up huge things and there'll be conflicts and also things are moving really quickly so i always like a big red flag is like white listing like that's something that even really good sports Explain lawyers that. sometimes don't know what that is because it's a new technical update on instagram where a brand can put money behind your post so that your instagram is promoting their brand and being served in who knows where campaigns. So like, those are the things it's really nice to have a, a trusted source who can look for those things and make sure that you're, you're signing something. It's the right thing. And, you know, well, you're it's a great, great segue into what I was going to ask you next, which is how can these athletes screw up a good thing? <laughs> how can they screw up like a good opportunity or yeah, a good, how, do, just how can they screw up a good thing where they, they've got this opportunity now uh, they don't know which way to go. What do we absolutely know if they do this, that they're going to get, you know, blackballed and no one's going to work with them? 
Let's let Jason take this. Our friend that's the actual attorney uh, and professor. This guy's kind of high maintenance, man. I don't think he wants to do nervous. anything. I, I, I think he was a little here. nervous to be associated with with uh, Barstool, given his <laughs> professional background and the fact that we're probably going to record his answers here and, and use it in court of law one day. So, all right, Jason, we'll throw I'm, it back. I'm going to take first of all. I'm going to answer this from a ten thousand foot perspective. I think the important thing to understand is there's a reason why big brands, including Beyond Meat and Oakley, haven't gotten into NIL yet, and why we haven't seen pretty much any major Fortune 1000 company touch NIL. And that's because rightfully so, every brand is scared of doing anything with an 18 to 22 year old because 18 to 22 year olds don't make good decisions. I didn't make good decisions when I was an 18 to 22 year old and I was a student athlete and a good student. And it's, it's a scary proposition. And so that is why the future of NIL depends on the return on investment that brands get and how often these student athletes do something stupid that hurts somebody's brand. And it's gonna happen, right? We've seen it on a daily basis with 400,000 division one student athletes, just by the numbers, there's gonna be somebody that's gonna get arrested every day. It's gonna get into trouble and eventually a brand is gonna get burnt by it. So to answer your question, Scott, if you, you're, when somebody aligns with a athlete or an endorser or influencer, they are leveraging their brand to help their brand, right? The, the, the company is using the influencer's brand, the influencer is using the company's brand to augment, right? To make one plus one equal three. And if somebody does something stupid, whether the question is asked before, whether the brand gets in trouble because they did something illegal, or the student athlete in this case does something even minor, like gets into a very public fight with their girlfriend on Instagram or Twitter, that can make the brand look really bad. It's not just about getting arrested or driving drunk or whatever it may be. You're a public person. I mean, it could be as simple as getting into a fight or having a bad foul in a, in a game, right? Maybe you tackled somebody poorly and got kicked out of the game. How do you think your brand partner is going to react to that right. right you get I mean, a flagrant foul and you might lose your endorsement yeah that's fair and th those are things that we can all agree on i guess what i was looking for and i'll open this up to the panel what are the things that you could do in terms of less egregious like not respond quickly or certain things that that they're that tactically that they're doing wrong not like getting drunk and punching someone in the bar fight yeah I, I think i think jason brought up a fantastic point um and to kind of piggyback on that that is sports marketing in general i mean you see that happen at the professional level every single day you're going to see it happen between now and the next three weeks while nfl training camp is going on something's going to happen somebody who's got a gigantic national endorsement deal is going to get in trouble and of course they're going to feel bad and the brand is going to feel bad. But why do brands want to engage with professional athletes? And now those 18 to 22 year olds that they've never once been able to work with before. It's because those 18 to 22 year olds have the most key demographic 24 to 55 year olds in the palm of their hands. Go look at their social media followings. Go read a message board for a big time basketball or football program. These people love these student athletes and want to know what they're interested in. So how can they mess it up? Yeah, I think by having inflated egos, Scott, I think by not being professional, I think by not responding, you are setting yourself up for failure because people get disrespected by that. I mean, we're all in the professional world now. When you send out an email and you just don't get a response, it doesn't feel good. Or if you call somebody and text them and they don't respond to you, it does not feel good. Or if you just simply ask somebody, hey, I'm really interested in what y'all are doing. I think there's some synergies here. Can we meet? And they say no without having a conversation. That doesn't feel good. And you're probably not going to go back to that person another time. So I think those are ways where you can lose early on. Keep in mind, we're only four weeks into this. Yeah. But this is a long game, even if it's just four years or a year if you're a senior. You've got a lot of opportunity. Let's just weigh the risks and rewards and not make any harsh, fast decisions. That's great yeah, advice. I would, I would say, so my, my older sister is an Olympian and I've heard her say this to other athletes. She's like, if you're working with a brand, you show up every single time that you need to show up and know that there's a thousand people in waiting in line behind you. So if you don't do a good job, it's an easy swipe to the next person. 
So when you go, you are on time. You are bright eyed and bushy tailed. You're saying hi to everyone. You're staying the whole amount of time. And obviously this is more like shoots and stuff like that, but it's really good. And she has, you know, 15 year deals with Red Bull and Rolex and Under Armour. And yeah, who's your, you who's your sister? She did a little this, she did a little yeah, this. Yeah, Lindsay Vaughn, she's an Olympic skier. Lindsay Vaughn, I, what does she do? Is she a skater? What? Downhill skier. <laughs> Bro, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, no, I, I know. Yeah, but it's it's really true, and I've seen it worked with a lot of athletes. And on the brand side, I mean, me and Chase were at Red Bull and being at tons of other stuff. You remember the athletes, even the smaller athletes that show up and are fun and are excited, and you're like, let's have let's have Jimmy back again, you know, like yep. absolutely who agree. Not? And you just remember over and over because it really is meetings of ten people saying, who should we work with? I don't know. Boom, boom, boom. So who are they going to remember? And it's usually the person that's nice, easy to work with, and like, great advice it, it's so simple and i think I, I think it's important for everyone to realize when lindsey vaughn knows that there's a hundred thousand people behind her in line i think that should give everybody a perspective because obviously you know she's once in a generation talent but if that's the perspective and attitude the best of the best have i think that that can only be amplified into the college space yeah that's 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 great advice um what do you guys think is too much money to pay somebody in college sports. Like, let's, how is this gonna twist everybody? Look at, he's, he's shaking his head. Blow the top Listen, off. I want, I want million dollar off. deals. Well, These kids like your boy, the quarterback it. at Arkansas. Well, who's a quarterback, Alabama? What's he getting a billion dollars? What's his guy? What's that guy's name, Drew? Hey, you know what? Like, like Suni Lee, Suni Lee, which is about to come on. She won the all yeah. gold all around to, to Karin's point. Okay. Simone Biles sat out. Suni Lee stepped in. She just won a gold medal. She's about to make millions of dollars in endorsement deals. She's about to be at Auburn raking in NIL cash. Why? Because she deserved it. Now, this is capitalism. I mean, this is a free market. I'm a big fan of that. I think she deserves whatever she can get, whatever she wants to align with. But case in point, there are people right behind you, just as talented, maybe more personable. Maybe they have better relationships with the people who are trying to offer you deals in which when they strike while the iron's hot, well, then they're off to the races. So I think it's a really exciting time. And again, there's just a lot of talent around. So it's important to differentiate yourself and to create those Listen, relationships. Are the big guys going to come in and pollute the whole area? One of the things that we talked about was that this is a real opportunity for small, medium-sized businesses, regional you know, insurance companies, car dealers, all these guys are going to have a chance of coming after these athletes. Do the big guys like the Oakleys and the Nikes and the Coca-Colas and the Gatorades, Jason, do you think they're going to come in, raise the stakes? And so now those regional guys get kind of pushed out again, or is it just going to kind of find its own little balance? No, I think it's the opposite. I think it's important. And if there's anything that I feel pretty confident about with NIL, and this is like a PSA to student athletes now and forever, NIL is not going to be fair, right? We, we talk about this, what's market value? Market value is never going to exist in NIL because there are plenty of student athletes right now who are getting paid, not because they're a great influencer or endorser, but because they're valuable to a football team or a basketball team, okay? We've seen that these last couple of weeks. We've seen it in the SEC. There is a reason why Bryce Young at Alabama is getting a million dollars in deals. He's not worth a million dollars in deals, okay? Unverified. We don't know. Unverified. Either. You'll never know. <laughs> I have a client. I represent coaches. I have a client who's uh, one of his players got a $2 million deal from an internet company, right? We all know. Is it Master AOL? His son, Hersey Miller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you see what company that was? They have two people working for them on LinkedIn and they updated their Facebook page once in 10 years. Do you think that's a real <laughs> deal? We'll never know, doesn't matter. But you can say, well, why is he getting $2 million and I'm a lottery pick and I can't get a $10,000 deal, right? That's not how it's gonna work in this place. So you have to focus on yourself, the value that you bring to the table and eventually people, brands are gonna find you. I don't think that the Nikes of the world are going to be jumping in here and endorsing thousands of student athletes. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them to do that when they can just pay the schools directly and you're going to have to wear their stuff anyway. Yeah. So I think the real opportunity from the business side is the localized brands, like you're saying, the car dealerships and everybody else that would have otherwise been priced out of the market yeah. because 
they can't compete with a huge brand, but now they can go find an individual athlete or two or whoever in their region, their county, their state that they can align with. And all of a sudden they can create something special. And it's not going to be a million dollar deal. It's probably going to be a, a four or five figure deal. And a student athlete should walk away pretty good. If I made 10 or $20,000 when I was 20 years old, I would have been elated. Oh, yeah. Hey, Hey, Jimmy, what do you what do you think if you can guess? And I'll open this up to the rest of the panel. But who's the who are the big winners going to be? Like, break it down. Sports is it going to be basketball, football, track, soccer? Is it going to be women, men? Give me your feedback around around that. Maybe you know, Chase. You know, you can start out and tell me what you think. I mean, yeah, for us, you know, it's kind of hard to say, but all of ours really depends on you keep hearing authenticity. You know, that's pretty much all you hear in marketing these days. And for us, you know, a soccer player doesn't really use eyewear. So that wouldn't really make sense for us. For football, you know, we make a football shield. So we're involved in stuff that makes sense for us the where we can get our story and our message across. So what's your personal feeling though? Like in terms of who do you think is going to really benefit? Like, do you, do you think it even, you can even take a guess at this point or is it why, so wide open? Or do you think it's going to be the rich are going to get rich. Johnny football is going to make all the money you know, one or two female soccer players, the rest is going to go to football and basketball. I would have to say it's pretty wide open. What do you think, Yeah, yeah you know, I think it's open to, to people that make their own destiny. You know, you've seen what the Cavender twins, those are two girls who play basketball at Fresno State. Like, who would have picked them as dominating the media on July 1? I mean, we had uh, Spencer Rattler dropping in our DMs wanting to figure out how does he get the same deal as them? And so I think and that's because they took control. They said, you know what? Uh, we have an opportunity here. This is fun. This is true to us. Let's put this on blast and see what kind of brand we can create. And so I think it's going to be people creating their own destiny. It's going to be brands looking to, to really capitalize on the opportunity to get creative, find better ways to leverage these marketing assets. And, uh, and it's, there's just so many new participants that are now coming together that I think it's going to be all over the place at first. I think the obvious, like, you know, football stars and basketball stars are going to get paid. It's going to be good. It's going to be very traditional to the same way a lot of the professional deals come together. But I think the exciting part is the volume. And it's going to be which athletes are going to get creative. Is it a golfer? Is it a gymnast? You know, uh, can create their own kind of, like, personal brand. And, uh, and it's exciting. I mean, now you can even see, like, uh, other like action sports athletes and skiers can now go to college and get sponsors throughout that process. And I know that's been a huge debate in that community where you would, you would actually forego school because you had too many opportunities to get paid. And so I, I just think it's going to be really exciting to see how this levels out. And I, I think you have your obvious winners. Uh, but that's going to be such a small piece of the total pie that, um, that it's going to be, you know, all over the place. So, we'll, we'll know more in five minutes. Drew Butler, how does this affect the locker room? What's happening in the locker room, you think, right now? Like, yeah, you is know, it going to divide? Or what, what, what kind of dynamic is happening in there? That, that's Besides a hypothetical. And all yeah, that's a hypothetical narrative that was spun around before July 1st. And, and quite frankly, I don't like to be this guy, but it was spun around from a lot of people who have never been in locker rooms before. And, and I'm sitting there going, guys, it's not the issue I've whatsoever. This is something that excites other players. I talk to student athletes now and I say, do you think it's going to affect? They go, no, absolutely not. I talked to some of my former teammates who have played college and professional sports. I say, is this going to affect the locker room negatively? They go, no, absolutely not. And I think to what Chase just said about the Cavender twins, if you want to be successful at a high level in the NIL era, it takes work. We were up in New York July 1st, a couple days before the 4th of July. Guess what? The Cavender Twins family was at the lake in Michigan. They flew out to New York. They did a media tour, created even more value for their brand, and it will continue to pay dividends. Karin, your sister, your sister, Lindsay Vaughn, on her off days, what does she do? She goes and works for her brand partners. When you're in an NFL locker room, your top talent, you get one, really one and a half off day during the season. What do those guys do? They go work for their brand partners to continue to make money off the field. If you want to succeed at a very high level and operate like a professional who makes a ton of dough off the field, it takes work. And I think that's important to note. This is not just brands wanting to throw you money for absolutely nothing. These are opportunities to say, yes, I will post this on Instagram. 
Yes, I will make this video that y'all can use. Yes, I will come do a commercial shoot for you because that's what it takes. That's what sports marketing is. Where, where should these Where should these kids go? And Karin, you can answer this, but where should these kids go for advice right now? Lots of people have it, but where should they be turning? I mean, I think it's nice if you have an agent or somebody that can kind of bounce some of these things off you. But I also think it's good to just be talking to other athletes. Like the value is what people are willing to pay for you. Um, and like another Lindsay example, she as a female athlete got her deals to be comparable to the men's skiers because she'd asked, she's like, Hey, how much are they paying you? And if I am winning twice as much as you, then why this is my new level set. So, um, I think talking and kind of understanding the, the marketplace also like, like what everyone was saying, especially drew is like, you have to deliver. So as someone mm -hmm. at a brand, I'm sitting here like, okay, how do I sell beyond Meat? I could buy ads on Instagram, or I could work with an athlete who has a reach in a certain audience that I want to capture. So like you have to really start. And, and if I pick the athlete, my job's on the line that they are going to deliver more than the paid ads. So you have to re really be thinking like, how am I actually delivering? And like some level set is like, you can know the general guidelines of like two cents per view is what people are paying general you could say like that's a pretty good price but like two cents per view for an ad so if i pay two cents somebody will view it so a million views is twenty thousand dollars but you can start to equate that to your own social and be like am i delivering this to somebody like mm. this is my value set or am i reaching am i reaching a certain audience that that brand is never going to get to and that's a value i'm bringing to them so right. it's kind of like understanding the the assets you're delivering to a company and then really working for them and really being able to say, I understand why this is driving sales. Like at the end of the day, it's like, are we buying, are we selling more Oakley move product. Face shields move product. or are we, yeah. Like how do you, how does that work? So good. To keep Jason, and Jason, you're not going to represent anybody that they're not going to make money for. Look, agents are in the business to make money. And I know that you're probably do a lot of philanthropic missionary work, but besides <laughs> if they get lucky and get an agent like you or rep like you, what are these kids going to do? I mean, there's 400 something thousand athletes that are eligible to get paid. What happens to the poor kids that, that have a crazy uncle? Where can they go? So they have two options. The first option is they need to be on a platform like Icon Source to be able to source deals because they want to be one of the, um, you know, maybe it's a brand that's going to do a mass deal. And so they can get in on that. But at the end of the day, it's going to be them being their agent and, the reality is that there are very few agents that are actually going to be working in the business. Think about it. If you're a student athlete and you may make a couple of thousand dollars, why would I want to represent you and make 15% of that? Maybe I would do it if you're going to be a pro athlete. And so I'm trying to get you now so I can potentially build a relationship with you. Otherwise, you have to be your own agent. And there's a, there's a saying among lawyers that the lawyer that has himself as a client is an idiot. Because when you walk into a room and you advocate for yourself, of course you are, right? Of course you're going to advocate for yourself. You have to be able to go in and explain and tell a story when you walk into a room that it is not just you telling people that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. What is it that you've done that has proven that, right? What is it that you bring to the table? Are you a, you know, a, a 4.0 student that's studying something that nobody else is? Do you have an incredible resume when it comes to volunteer work? bring something to the table that is really, really unique and valuable, or think about your life story and think about what brands resonate with that and go find them, right? Like as Simon Sinek says, if, if, if student athletes haven't read it, they should read Simon Sinek, start with why, right? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And if you don't know what your why is, no one's gonna ever wanna partner with you. No one's gonna ever wanna hire you. Interesting. Yep. Go ahead, do you have something, Chase? No, it's good stuff. I think like going back to what Karin said, athletes get paid to sell stuff. And I know like when you're young, you think it's because you're good at your sport. You think you can do the best tricks and you're so cool. But at the end of the day, you got to move the product. And it's kind of like a sad realization. But the, if you don't realize that, then you're going to burn the, the team manager that hired you. You're going to burn that brand. They're not going to come back. Uh, and you're definitely going to make it challenging to, to do your next deal when your when your endorsement's up. So I think just realizing that as an athlete and understanding the kind of economics, even just basically that that's kind of led to this moment is a good is good to keep in perspective. And then just double down, work hard for for uh, the people that support you that think what you're doing is cool. I think right, so I'm just going to say Butler. one thing quickly on that. Um, 
a, a very local um, comparison. Georgia football player last year. He was a kicker. Rodrigo Blankenship. Okay. Rodrigo wore rec specs. Hashtag respect the specs. Would talk about how much he loved Star Wars. Would talk about how much he loved Legos and collected Legos. Look, that's not generally a cool thing to talk about. Not a lot of football players wear prescription sunglasses while they play football, but he was beloved. And any brand would know, oh my God, if we work with Rodrigo, he could sell our stuff. That is one player outside the 1% that could have raked in NIL cash a year ago, kind of outside the box because of how he worked on himself, because of what he did to engage with fans. And because of he just doubled down on his own identity and he's still doing it now in the pros and he's seeing the benefits of it. Jimmy, that might be a good guy for you to reach out to. <laughs> and also at a huge level, I always is I worked at Uninterrupted for LeBron for the last three years before this, but LeBron literally starts a tequila company. He goes to courtside at the finals. He brings the bottle of tequila yeah. and is drinking it. He goes to the, the media day. He's pouring himself the tequila and drinking it. It's like, he does not need to be pushing anything. And he is right, that right. dedicated. Yeah. Right. And it like, and it shows. And it's like, that's why Nike's paying him a billion dollars. That's funny. Hey, did you know yeah. Stacy Garcia there? Yeah, love Stacy. Right. Yeah, she I've known her for a long time. NFL from Fox, from a good old show that they canceled. I don't know why. Best Damn Sports Show. How'd that get canceled? <laughs> How did Best Damn Sports Show get canceled? I can't figure it out. Real quick to wrap this up. And I don't want to wrap it up on a bad note, so don't take it this way. But I, I want to know, like, these kids are there to go to school. And they're there, they're there to enjoy a sport that they've been playing most of their, you know, prepubescent life into adulthood. They're, if they make it to the pros, that's a business. While they're in college, how do they balance? And you don't have to be, you know, an athlete. You just, I just want your opinion. How are these guys going to balance enjoying that day in class with their friends, going to a party, you know, going to the local pizza joint, uh, playing on the field? How are they going to balance it? Drew, I'll start with you, but Jimmy, you know, I want all you guys to kind of give me a couple minutes on that and wrap it up. Yeah. Use icon source. That's how you balance it. Streamline the process, put yourself <laughs> out there in the best way so that it's mostly inbound. And then you can decipher what's right and what's wrong and why icon source. I mean, look at this panel right here. Karn has worked in sports and entertainment for a while. Jimmy's at Oakley right now. Chase used to run Red Bull's athlete marketing program. Jason is an absolute freak expert in all things <laughs> legal and student athlete NIL. And Scott, 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 we all love Appreciate him. But that's that. what we're here for. All right, rapid right? fire, rapid Absolutely. fire. Absolutely, go ahead. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you got? Yeah, and kind of like everybody said, you know, just use this as a learning experience too. You know, work hard double down, be yourself, be authentic. And I think it'll pay off. You know, every brand is trying to st tell a story and a message and, you know, just see how you f fit in that brand's story and message and work hard. Sweet. Jason, how do they balance life and this new opportunity? I think they have to come to grips about what kind of opportunity it really is, unless they're a really, really big athlete that's going to go pro or they have some unique skill set. If they're just the regular old Joe that's a division one athlete, then they have to say to themselves, I need to treat this like an internship, like a job. I'm going to parlay this to help me later in life with all the other things that I pursue and create some time balance around it. But if, if, if you're going to be running around trying to get NIL deal, NIL deals all the time, it's, something's going to give, you're probably worth, I mean, it's probably better off just getting a minimum wage job somewhere because you're probably going to make more money than you are. Yeah, but I'm saying like there's a distraction and everything else. Like you yeah. got to enjoy your life while you're in college and not get so caught up in you getting some huge deal from Subway or something. Karin, what do you yeah. think? I would think it's like being curious and just raising your hand, like uh, taking it as something that's a learning and it's getting your foot in the door to big companies to exactly like get internships, understand deal structure. Like you're if you kind of just learn and be curious about it versus trying to like just use it as a cash grab. I think that's going to get you further and you'll learn a lot about the process and you'll come out of college with a lot of valuable understanding of the business world. So, so don't obsess about it. Don't let it take over your life. There'll be deals that'll come probably and be more interested in the opportunity to learn about business and about some of the stuff. Yeah. You. Chase Garrett, CEO of Icon Source. I'm going to leave the, the last call with you, man. Uh, you were an athlete, I think at some point in your life, I think now you're married, living in Denver, all bellied out. Like I don't know what kind of operation you're running. You're running ragged, building this company. But back, what, what kind of advice would you give these kids to balance 
this life now? Yeah, I think um, going back to my point of being authentic, you know, look at what you, what products do you use on a daily basis? Don't go out on a, like a crazy hunt to try to find some deal that's not been uncovered yet, but go ahead and just start with what's unique to you. What, what is the, the stuff that you use, the brands that you love, and you can, you know, find a way to, to just let them know through either a platform like ours or just being a, you know, a hustler, but you know, then you obviously need to go through the steps of making sure you're protected. So uh, yeah, being authentic, leaning into that opportunity, why, why the iron's hot and, uh, and seeing what you can get out of it because it's, is it it's safe? only enough time. Is it safe to do deals? Can everybody agree that it's safe, that it, the law passed, that it's legal? You can actually get endorsement. You can get paid, right, Drew Butler, for your name, image, and likeness. You're not going to get in trouble, right, if you follow the rules? Yeah. Yeah, it's July 29th. We're ready to go, and it's, uh, it's just a really exciting time to be a student athlete. I wish I was one once again. That's you look for like sure. you could go back to school, Rodney. What do you think? Any eligibility left in college? You got a couple minutes? Yeah. Me? What do you got? <laughs> I, I wish, man. I'm Dude, washed up. a couple up, of hours? Can't, isn't up. there something? Like, how do they know for sure it was a full four years? Like, you know, could be a couple of days you could get back in there. They, they know. know. They know. You still got parking me. tickets. You probably yeah. are. You're not going to go back there. <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody on the panel. I really appreciate everybody chipping in. Uh, a lot of great knowledge. Uh, if you're listening, you're a college athlete. Hopefully this was helpful. We're going to continue to have these. Uh Every month or every couple months, whatever, we'll figure it out. If you have certain things that we didn't uh, cover tonight, please uh, reach out to us. If you're a student athlete and you're not signed up on Icon Source right now, I would urge you to do so. It is a free platform. It's very informative. You'll probably see lots of your friends on there and uh, you'll learn a lot. And uh, listen, this is a special time. It's almost like getting the right to vote. If you're not taking advantage of this opportunity to get paid for your name, image, and likeness, uh, uh, you're not American. You're not serving your country well. So get out there and get 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 what's yours. It doesn't come along often. So go get yours. And uh, that's it. Everybody have a great night. I'm gonna go for a swim, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Thanks y'all.